What do you think the purpose of advisory is? Well, I think that the primary purpose of advisory is really to allow for a meaningful bond to be established between every student and at least one adult in the building. Basically, every student has one adult who they can go to who can help them. Um, I think it's to connect with other students in the school and other teachers and have a teacher who you can talk to about anything you want. I think it's to help break the divisions between our grade lines and also make it so that a group of students is really close to one teacher if they feel like they need to talk to someone, an adult in the school for any reason. I think it's so that we have an adult that we can connect with and that we get to know people that we didn't know just in our normal schedules. Bring people closer together through multiple classes so there's more of a unified school community. There is research that indicates that students do better in school when they have a connection with an adult at school. For a lot of our students they have this through sports or clubs or activities, theater, um, band, but there is a large population in our school that doesn't have that connection and it can be a pretty powerful motivator towards school success. So advisory is designed to make sure that every student in the school has that opportunity to connect with an adult. Advisory is a way for us to make the school smaller. It's a way to have students interact with a, um, a teacher or an adult in the building who's not necessarily a teacher that they know to improve the community in ways of just sort of friendliness and comfort for all students and also to try to make a, a fairly decent sized school. No, I don't think there is any purpose of advisory. It just takes a free time of students and just waste time. When the students can be doing other work like they can be attending more classes rather than sitting in advisory and just sitting around doing nothing. And they also had no good topics to talk about. Is it working? I don't know if it's working or not. Um, is it meeting those needs? It, it feels to me like it's really sporadic. It doesn't meet often enough. I know it has to change in the schedule because it's really disruptive to the planning lessons of the other classes. And so it needs to move around through the day. One of the results of that, I think, is that it just feels random and therefore not important. This is my first year here, and it's my first advisory. I don't know, I didn't know any of the students coming in. I have trouble remembering their names when I see them again. Partly because they don't all always show up, and partly because I only see them maybe once a month. I'm not really establishing any kind of relationship with them, which is the whole point, at least in my opinion. That's a place where we can establish another kind of connection. That's what deepens the culture of the school. No, I don't think it's working because most people, when they, when they become seniors, most of the seniors escape advisory, they, they don't even go. So it's just basically the juniors, the sophomores, and some of the freshmen, because the freshmen don't even know how it works. All the people are just shy, shitting, or sitting around, and nobody's even talking. It's just like playing a quiet room and nobody's talking. There is some advisories that I've heard of that are definitely more effective than any others. And what I've heard from the effective ones is that they don't, they introduce the subject, but then they end up talking about what's really on their mind that day. So it's kind of a more loose schedule. Honestly, I think there's the cliche of, oh, the grades are so divided, but personally in this school, even without advisory, I don't think that's necessarily the case. And I know for me, I don't necessarily feel that close to my advisor, but I also don't feel I really need the need to be that close to one individual. I know I have teachers that I'm a lot closer to than my advisor. Depending on the advisory you're in, you probably have different feelings about it. I do see students that I would never encounter during the day, and I can say hi, how you doing, that kind of thing. It took a while, and at first, the kids that were in it, it didn't really go well, but when we got new freshmen, things started to, like, the group started to mix better and the teacher started to like open up to us more. The data that we just got from a parent, um, from a parent survey indicates that it's working moderately well. The problem is we have no way of really identifying which students didn't have a connection with an adult in the building and which ones do now. If I had to grade it, I'd give it a B or a C. Should grades be integrated in advisory? I think it's good that we have different grades in advisory so we get to know other people. 
I'm a fan of the mixed grade system. Is good for freshmen, sophomores to have access to juniors and seniors, like what courses to take. I remember being a freshman, it was helpful to have um, juniors and seniors like reflect on what was good and bad within their high school careers and how to improve that. I like the mixed group. I like how we have seniors, 11th graders, 10th graders, and 9th graders. I think that that makes it feel a little bit friendlier, particularly to younger kids who are coming into the school. Yeah, I feel like if the seniors are willing to go and help the junior, like the freshman class that's coming in, that would be really helpful for them to get a guideline on how the school works and how how they can progress during the high school. There's some advantages to the mixed grade level advisory. There's these moments when a senior or a junior imparts upon the freshman or sophomore this little pearl of wisdom, and the freshman and the sophomore has that aha uh, type of experience. But those are moments. They're minutes um, in a year, in a, a year where you spend maybe 400 or 500 minutes in advisory. To have two or three where you have that kind of experience, I'm not sure that it's worth keeping it mixed grade. The way school's been structured up until high school, of the classes where you have to take like freshman English, sophomore English, and things like that, you're with your grade pretty much your whole school career. And so it's good to get to know people outside of maybe like just sports. How can advisory be improved? Talking about current events and stuff would be better. School, like events that are happening, or current events that are happening, how homework affects people, like do they want more homework or less homework or is the homework right now is adequate? That would help the teachers as well, giving them an idea how, how much homework they should give. Talk about bullying, how it affects the children and, and like talk to them personally, is it affecting any single child or not? We're trying really hard to find ways to improve advisory. I think one of the, one, when we surveyed students, the thing that came up most clearly is that they wanted this to be fun. They wanted it to feel different from their regular school day. Um, and that's, we're trying to find a way to do that. But there's also the second thing though, is they want it to be meaningful. To redo the same things year after year, by the time you are a junior or a senior, you remember the lesson, you're not that engaged because you've done it a couple of times. Um, so we need to create a, a program that has four years of distinct things to do so that you're not repeating year after year. I would like to see it be a little bit more student directed and maybe have more of some open session time. I think it's really nice to have kids talking to each other, having it be a little bit more fun and does not feeling like a class or an obligation. A bunch of different groups could, let's say, go to the Survival Center, take a field trip, like we could do the African American History Walk. We could all have a little ping pong tournament, a few groups do something. More training would definitely be key to that. A good number of teachers don't realize that they can be a lot more loose about it than they are. A good number of teachers just follow the script and this is exactly where advisory has failed. You end up giving an impression that you don't think students are as intelligent as they are, that you don't think they're human beings. You just end up creating a horrible environment for everyone involved. Some sort of kind of unified thing for like if they all would work on like a community service project. Improvising new topics and encouraging seniors to go and talk to the younger classmen and also like coming up with good topics to talk about so that everyone gets involved and pe people not shy just sitting around. Politics and um, what can make our school better less based off of like how authority sees it more based off of how we like interact day to day and so if the teachers can open up kind of conversational based stuff instead of solely like a very written curriculum of how we're gonna talk about current events and like what's within our school it'll be a lot easier. Do you think students take mentorship roles in their advisories? I don't think so I think my advisory we don't really have like student mentors everyone kind of participates because our freshmen are very social. Everyone just thinks about themselves and most people are just sitting around not doing anything. They're just sitting plainly for 45 minutes. Although it just gives some students a free time to just relax and give their stress away, but it's just a waste of time and there is no productive work going on. I think it really depends on the teacher. I think it depends on does the teacher want to encourage that? Does 
the te is the teacher just not interested? Is the teacher just trying to keep 13 kids under control? Um, it really depends. I feel like there are some advisories where students take mentorship roles. Um, I feel like I have an advisor who would like that to happen, but she hasn't really been quite successful. Well, she's been kind of successful. Um, I, I'd also mention that there was a plan to um, train 75 students as mentors in advisories, but that fell through. I have not personally seen students take mentorship roles. Very minimally, at best, would there be a sense of seniors guiding the underclassmen. So, I can't say that I've, I haven't seen it. I've heard of it happening, but I don't have the direct experience. Should students be able to choose their advisories? If they chose their advisor, it would pose another problem where it would just be, uh, some teachers would have lots and lots of kids in their advisory, and then some teachers wouldn't have as many. If it was where everyone had a separate teacher where they liked, and it, it all turned out even, it would be a great idea but just because it would be so, like there would be teachers with very large classes and teachers with very small classes, I don't think it's a good idea. If we let students choose their advisories, then a lot of students would gravitate to certain advisors and that would just create a horrible situation for everyone. Yes and no, because if they were able to choose it, they would all just pick all their friends and instead of talking to the teacher or getting to know the teacher, they would just talk amongst themselves because they're already good friends. And no, because like, if you organize and advise your group and let other people communicate together and become good friends with the teacher and other people that they, they don't know already, it would be much helpful for the whole school. No, I think that the idea of it being random, as long as everyone is holding up what they're supposed to do, like pertaining to teachers following what they're supposed to do, I think that that's going to work a lot better than us picking who we want to be with because through selection, people that are less wanted quote unquote will be subjugated to being in a group they might ne not necessarily want to be in. We're playing with fire a little bit if we let students choose because how are they making that selection and what do we do if there are people who aren't chosen? We don't want to make this a popularity contest. I can understand the logic of wanting to do that if you're asking the students to have a relationship with a teacher that is a strong relationship that motivates them to come to school and do well then it should be somebody that they like. Um, and so to sort of arbitrarily put kids in a classroom and say, all right, like that person, that doesn't make sense. But also what doesn't make sense is saying, all right, let everybody go pick your favorite teacher and be in their advisory. We know that there are some teachers in the school that are more popular than others. And if everyone's flocking to their classroom and no one's at mine, I want to feel a little bit bad about that. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm an adult, I can handle it. But at the same time, w that doesn't work for balancing numbers either. So I can't have an advisory with 300 kids in it and then you know, 10 staff with no kids in theirs. It has, you have to have a, a way to balance the numbers.